Basic Brewing Radio is sponsored in part by the American Homebrewers Association. Now through May 31st, get a quarter pound of H.S. Zamba hops when you join or renew your American Homebrewers Association membership with the promo code ZAMBA, that's Z-A-M-B-A, to get a quarter pound of H.S. Zamba hops. Get offer details at homebrewersassociation.org slash basicbrewing. That's homebrewersassociation.org slash basicbrewing. Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, May 19th, 2022. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about homebrewing. This week, Tony Monzi, our Italy correspondent, returns after a 14-year absence to tell us about Italian grape ale. Sometimes it's funky and tart. Sometimes it's fruity. It's the convergence of beer and wine culture in Italy. If you go to basicbrewing.com, you can find archives of our audio and video shows. And if you go to basicbrewingshop.com, you can find our DVDs and our brewer's logbooks. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Basic Brewing and find our show page on Facebook as well. If you want to support us financially, check out patreon.com slash basicbrewing. And thanks to everybody who's helping out in that way. If you go to patreon.com slash basicbrewing, you can see a long list of stuff that you can access if you sign up as a supporter. Financial supporters have already seen the video episode that I'm planning to post uh, to the general public on Friday. It's the one about my delicious Simcoe Two-Hearted Ale clone. I took the original clone recipe for Bell's Two-Hearted Ale and traded Simcoe for the centennial hops that were specified in the original. It's a delicious beer. No surprise there. Uh, Next week, I'm going to take the week off from posting the show. It's my wife's birthday week, Susan's. So uh, we're going to spend some family time. But I'm planning to be back the first week of June with lots more good stuff in the pipeline. Last week, you might have noticed I was a bit stopped up sounding. Well, the day after I recorded that episode, uh, I tested positive for COVID. I'm fully vaxxed and fully boosted, so I basically felt like I had a cold, no fever. And uh, I'm guessing I might have caught it at the Elvis Costello concert, but I'm the only one of, of the small group that we went with that has tested positive. And that goes for everybody, the the small number of people that I, I have come in contact with since uh, before I got tested. You know, it's kind of ironic. You know, Susan and I have been extremely careful over the pandemic and and. We decided to, you know, we mask everywhere, and even to the, even to this day, I mask going to the grocery store and the post office, and and isolating and all that stuff. And we decided to go to the concert because the numbers were low in Tulsa County, and the venue was requiring proof of vaccination or a negative test. Although although the people at the door weren't very vigilant about asking uh, for that. And, uh, you know, after all that, after, you know, me being the most paranoid guy, I'm the one who got it. (laughs) All to to say that uh, COVID is still out there. So if you're like me and worry about the long time effects or if you're immune uh, immune compromised or if one of your immediate family members or somebody you're in contact with a lot is immune compromised, it's still out there and uh, you should uh, protect yourself in the way that you choose. Happier news from our friends and sponsors, Ricky and Kelly from Groenfell and Havoc Meaderies up in Vermont. Groenfell and Havoc Meads are gearing up to celebrate Pride Month again this June. This year, they'll be celebrating with a brand new brew, Be Proud, that's B-E-E, Proud, which is an orange cassis sour mead. Part of the proceeds from the brew will go to support a soon-to-be-chosen LGBTQ plus organization. Uh, orange cassis is a Japanese cocktail made with black currant liqueur and orange juice. And uh, this mead apparently includes both tastes. And to celebrate its release, Groenfell and Havoc are having a label design contest. First prize is 100 bucks, and your artwork will be on every can of Be Proud Orange Cassis Sour Mead. Deadlines for submissions is May 26th. Voting will run through the end of the month, May 31st. For details on how to enter, check out the blog post on growenfell.com and look for Be Proud Orange Cassis Sour Mead in early June on family-owned and operated 
Groenfell.com. That's G R O E N N F E L L. Fans of the archives will remember when I had Tony Monzi on the show way back in March of 2008. Uh, Tony talked about the fledgling craft beer industry in Italy and uh, how brewers were using ingredients like chestnuts to create beers with local flair. Well, now Italian brewers are looking to their Ventnor counterparts for inspiration in creating these new Italian grape ales. Tony Manzi, welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Thank you for having me with uh, with your show. I love the show. I used to watch it and listen to it every time. Well, thank you. I, and it, you've, you're a veteran of the show. It's only been, what, 14 years since you've been on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually learned how to brew at, at home with your show. So, <laughs> Oh, well, excellent. Uh, I have to... I have to ask the people that have tried my beers that if, if, if that was worth it, but I, I don't know. That's a different story. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll take credit for the good ones, uh, yeah. <laughs> but not the blame for the bad ones. How about that? <laughs> uh, now you you're back in the in the podcast world. Um, yeah, you uh, you recently sent me a link uh, to a new podcast episode that you produced. Uh, what have you gotten yourself into? So um, uh, the first podcast I had, and, and it, I, I'm not, I'm not bragging now. It's what it, it was really inspired by what you guys were doing. So <laughs> I would like to do it too. I always loved radio, you know. And uh, we just chatted a few minutes ago about what we do, and, and we did uh, almost the uh, same thing. So uh, I, I was really craving to get inside those two passions, like radio uh, and uh, and beer and home brewing. So. Uh, in 2008, I made this podcast called uh, Beer Radio, uh, and that's the uh, two uh, words. It's birra, and it's beer in Italian, and radio, and uh, spoken in, in Italian. And I did it for two, three years. Then, uh, you know, life gives you a lot of things, and <laughs> I couldn't catch up for it. And I just uh, abandoned it for a few uh, years. And I was, um, but it, the, the podcast led me to uh, the um, Italian uh, craft beer uh, union, microbrewery union that's called Union Birrai. It's an association of little craft brewers. And when uh, when I started uh, to know about them, because I, I used to interview them, uh, I just got to uh, volunteer with them at the uh, Italian competition. It's called Birra dell'anno. That means uh, beer of the year. And here in Italy, you know, the, all the microbrewing stuff was just exploding. It, it started in the early 2000. And in 2008, 2010, like it, the competition we were uh, doing, it held like uh, maybe less than 200 uh, brewers, uh, less than 200 beers and, and less than 60, 70 brewers. And uh, now uh, the last competition, it was uh the award ceremony is just a couple of days ago. Uh, they got uh, we got like almost two thousand entries, <laughs> and they were like over uh, six hundred and fifty microbrewers, and so that gets you the the. And you can imagine how Italy is exploding in, in that way. So, Union uh, Birai asked me uh, just a couple of months ago, uh, why don't we get a, again the uh, the podcast and make it a podcast of what uh, Union Birrai does and says, and just to educate more about beer, you know, because um, this thing has been floating for uh, more than uh, almost 20 years now. And people still have to mm, still have the need to know about uh, what craft beer is, what home brewing is. And, you know, just to get the difference from uh, craft brewing and industrial brewing, uh, a lot of uh, industries, here in Italy are what they try to do crafty things. And so people are very, uh, you know, confused. And so we're just getting on the podcast again and I can't be happier. Well, excellent. It, it's, it's called in, let me know if I get this wrong. You beer radio. So it's you, yeah. you B E E radio. Yeah, that's right. Because union birai is called you Ubi. That's union birai. It's a union of, uh, of, of brewers 
And so it spells the, the, um, the logo is UB actually. And, uh, and so we just played with the words and said UB radio and just to get things together and, and just resemble even the radio that I used to do. So a lot of people actually, uh, I, I couldn't believe this actually. <laughs> a lot of people just wrote me after the first episode and saying, Oh, I can, I'm so happy you came back because I, I still have your uh, your files in my computer. I still listen to them sometimes. You know, wow. <laughs> I was I was waiting for for this kind of things to come back. So that that was really fun. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> we have Mon- Monzi maniacs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> couldn't believe that, right? <laughs> well, excellent. Uh, I listened to the to the show. You sent me the link, and I got it just as I was getting into my car to go to the uh, to drive to the grocery store. So I listened to it in the car. And uh, I'm impressed. It w- you did real well, and it's in English, so uh, yeah. you know that's for for English speakers. That's a, that's a good thing. Um, but you you introduced people uh, at the, or uh, interviewed people at this event, mm-hmm. and uh, you have a very approachable style uh, of talking to people, uh, and that really well, comes. And I think that really comes out in in the you know how people respond to you. Um, so who did you talk to uh, on the show? Well, uh, that was the first episode uh, in English. We did uh, three episodes in Italian, uh, but the real goal is to uh, to launch the the podcast in English because uh, what uh, Union Birai wants to do, and and surely I want to do too with them, is to spread the word uh, of Italian craft beer uh, all over the world. And so, uh, in English, that. I think that's the better language to get almost every, everywhere on, on the globe. And so that's where we're launching. That was the first episode that's got on. I got a second one coming on uh, in a few days. And it's going to talk about the um, Bira dell'Anno ceremony, award ceremony that was held in, uh, in Parma uh, a few days ago. Another foodie city uh, of Italy, if, you, if someone <laughs> recounts these uh, cities. We did the tastings in Bologna that I talked about it in the podcast that is one of the major cities to uh, to eat and drink and to have fun. <laughs> so mm. uh, and, and it was a lot of fun doing it in English. Uh, this year we have uh, 60 judges, 60 beer judges, and they were just evenly divided, like 30 Italian ones and 30 uh, from all over the world. So um, I spoke, I, I know a lot of them, uh, a lot of them I just knew in, in the days of Bologna. Uh, so I spoke with um, David Anderson. I spoke with uh, Hel- uh, Herlinda Harris. Uh, that's also a podcaster too. Uh, I spoke with uh, Tom Carroll. Uh, I spoke with Carl Kins. That's one of the uh, biggest uh, um, EBCU members. That's a uh, uh, European uh, Drinkers Union, mm. and he is a judge, maybe one of the first international judges on um, on Bira dell'Anno, and uh, all very nice, kind guys, and all very uh, passionate about Italy, passionate about Italy's uh, food style uh, and certainly craft beer style, and they all appreciate uh, Italian. They all uh, just. Um, have judged several years, so they just witnessed the uh, progress that Italian brewers uh, are making uh, on on beer. Yeah, I have, I have a friend uh, and his family who I've known since uh, seventh grade uh, here in the United States. He lives in or they live in uh, Rome now, and he's always wow. saying, you know, you need to come over, like, you know, because <laughs> you know Italian beer is quite good nowadays. You know, you need to uh, to record some things over here. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, so what is the state of, of Italian craft beer nowadays? Uh, there's a fun fact about Rome, actually. Uh, you have to know that uh, now you can find micro breweries all over the Italy, you know? Uh, we, we, we call it the boot, lo stivale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, you can find it all from north to south. But actually, the uh, majority of the producers of the, the micro breweries are in the, in the central, central north. Uh, and, uh, the fun fact is that in central Italy, Northern Italy, we got most producers, but the, the most consumers are actually in Rome, you know, ah. from Roman and down. And that, and that's quite strange. And that's quite, you know, uh, that's why you, um, if you go to Rome and, uh, I'll tell everyone <laughs> I recommend to come, uh, you can find a 
very uh, active uh, craft beer scene because there are lots of little pubs that have, you know, craft beers from not all, uh, not only in Italy, but all over the world. You know, in the uh, late nineties uh, in Italy, especially in Rome, uh, there was a huge um, investments for on on pubs that all used to look alike, and they all uh, used to look like uh, Irish. English pubs, ah. they all used to have tenants, uh, uh, Guinness, you know, uh, all those kind of beers. And so people thought that, you know, okay, that beer scene is like that. But, uh, but you know, with a craft beer scene running in 2000, Rome has developed a lot of consumers. So that's a, a quite strange thing. And uh, mm, Italy is making a lot of efforts, a lot of uh, mm, even to uh, have a, an identity because it, it's strange, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, I don't know, uh, you go in Japan and you look for pizza, <laughs> know, things like that. You know, you, know, you come in Italy, and Italy, Italy has a craft beer scene. Uh, Tom Carroll actually uh, was talking to me at on the show and, and he just, he just said, you know, he, when the first time they told him, uh, okay, let's go taste some Italian beers, Italy. Italy has craft beers. <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> and so it's, it's got a lot of time for that. A lot of people outside don't know about Italy, but the the the, the nice thing about Italy is that uh, the brewers got the beers, uh, got the techniques from Germany, Belgium, Belgium a lot, uh, even from England, and they got their their own ingredients, their, their um, own ter- territory. Uh, we got beers with the for for foreign people maybe in, with strangest things inside but if you taste it they're not so strange uh the first famous beers were were made with chestnuts mm-hmm. uh were flavored with chestnuts and uh, it actually has a, a a particular style and they use like uh roasted chestnuts they use um chestnut flour uh they use like uh, chestnuts infusions a lot of things and and it's quite it's quite nice uh, but in the first years they, they were you know outside italy they, who who was running into craft beer just knew about that and then a lot of things come in um a lot of people start growing hops uh some companies uh just got some old italian hops uh really quite mm, most uh, mm, re- that resemble uh german hops mm. because they were near Austria and all in the northern places. Sure. And, and so they started developing a, a sort of an Italian style. And now we have uh, a style that was in the competition of Via Lano that's called Italian Pills. And um, it's uh, a style uh, that resembles the, the German pills, the Bohemian pills. pills. But uh, it has like um, all, almost always a, a dry hopping and uh, Similar always with the, the European continental hops, mm, yeah. rarely with the Pacific hops. But, you know, and, that, and that's a, a, an Italian thing that's, I, I know, uh, I was talking with um, uh, Herlinda Heras uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and she told me in California, uh, it's been a thing in quite a few months that, you know, they're all craving for this Italian pills. Uh, but the biggest thing, actually, in Italy is the uh, what they call IGA, or IGA, that's Italian Grey Peel, and that's just another story. Yeah, that's that, that's what uh, perked up my ears. I remember talking about the <laughs> chestnut beers uh, back in yeah. two, 2008. Um, but when I heard uh, Italian Grape Ale, uh, that really got my attention, and you know, we've talked about making meads with grapes or grape juice. You know, those are piments. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just happened to this week see a video that our friend Adam Ross up at Twin Span Brewing, uh, he mm-hmm. made – he brewed a beer with grapes in the kettle. But I think that – I mean, and we're used to – one of your guests, you know, talked about uh, aging beer in wine barrels, which uh, Vinnie mm-hmm. Chiller's of, uh, of Russian River – uh, does that, I believe. And, and you know, so there's there's a little, you know, tipping our toes into, you know, blending uh, the grapes uh, into the beer. Uh, but it, I guess it makes sense. I mean, you know, Italy uh, is known for wine, uh, not so much for beer. So it kind of makes sense that that sort of terroir would would work its way in the and that there would be a combination. 
yeah, that 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 one's been a, a thing since the uh, late two thousand eight, two thousand nine. That um, uh, brewers were trying to age beers in in wine barrels, and actually, I think that um, mm, the the American brewers just got the idea from Italy because some uh, some of the Italian brewers went there, went to visit and talk with the, those brew monsters for us and <laughs> and they just exchanged uh you know ideas and thoughts and and they started together doing this, this thing i think and um, uh, italy was craving in that that time uh, the, all the craft beer lovers were craving for a uh, belgian technique so you know uh beer fermentation open fermentation or uh, barrel fermentation with wild yeast and things like that and and so they started uh fermenting in those in those barrels uh uh, there were some people use uh, Solera uh, barrels. So some other people use uh, uh, Italian types like uh, um, Barbera or uh, Canonao in Sardinia or uh, I don't know, there's even white wines, Moscatos mm. and things like that. And mm, they started that that way. But uh, uh, the wineries, the strange thing that most wineries started uh, doing beers. Uh, they, because there was a lot that time that used to mm, the state used to give some money to uh, convert your uh, your farm to to multiple uh, products that were made in the majority from the, the ingredients made in the farm. Huh. So uh, most of the wineries are even farms, and so they got the opportunity because there was a little bit of wine crisis at that time, and so they said, okay, we start you know, growing, uh, uh, growing the grains for, for, for doing malt and things like that. So there are some regions that actually a lot of wineries turned, uh, turned themselves even into uh, microbreweries. Ah. And that's where they started just getting wine and beer together, you know, just playing with things. And um, Italy has a law that you can't use actual wine into ingredients uh, into, to making beer. So, you can't uh, just get a wine and, and make a beer and just combine things. Actually, it's, it's against the law. So you, you have to use uh, the ingredients before it actually gets wine. Mm. And so what they do, they used to use uh, uh, when they make wine, at, you know, in, in, uh, in first, first September, late August, and so in, uh, in the autumn, uh, that's the time where, you know, uh, the vineries, uh, the wineries just got, you know, used, uh, grapes when they all, um, they crush the grapes and they just send out the, the result of all the crushing and brewers, uh, are started using that stuff to get the wild yeast and ferment into, uh, into malt must. It was oh, wow. all an experiment. Yeah. And there was a tons of experiment like this, you know, people experimenting, uh, uh, fermenting uh, by night with the with a full moon, you know, <laughs> <laughs> things are really strange. Things. But actually, it, uh, above all these strange experiments, we really got a lot of experience doing with the, uh, getting the wild yeast from the um, from the grape skin sure. that was actually used to make a wine. Or uh, a lot of people used to have experiments with the um, with the must, or with a with a crushed uh, grapes juice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes semi fermented, sometimes not. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> going on that line, just uh, uh, back and forth. And another interesting thing that was uh, uh, one brewer actually was doing that, and, and now several does uh, got. Uh, uh, an ancient recipe uh, made from uh, from the Romans, and that's called sapa, and that's the wine must uh, reduced on a kettle, mm -hmm. almost as a syrup. Right. It, it takes like, like twenty six hours, I think. You know, wow. Something. It's a very very long process, and it's uh, it gets a syrup. And <clears throat> ancient Romans used to used to use this syrup as a sugar, and so uh, they got this ancient recipe. They got this uh, Italian mustard from, uh, I think it was Canonao. That's kind of uh, grapes that grow in Sardinia. And that makes an excellent wine. And uh, it, mm, this brewery actually made a beer uh, combining uh, the malt with uh, the sapa. And 
not, nothing to tell is extraordinary <laughs> kind of beer. So, uh, yeah, and that led, you know, the, all those experiences led to uh, a, a sort of style that has now uh, several uh, subcategories like uh, uh, red IGAs, white IGAs, wild yeast IGAs, uh, barrel aged uh, IGAs. And uh, it's like in the last 10 years, this thing has very exploded. It, it was so huge that um, the English BJCP uh, made actually a, a category that, that was called Italian Grape Ale. Uh. Uh, except that uh, like uh, last year in December, they were um, thinking about uh, canceling the name Italian. I don't know if they made it already. This thing, uh, and a lot of Italians wanted to protest. I think they 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 sent a lot of emails to B, BJCP for about that. Uh, yeah, we we still have uh, India pale ales. Why can't we have Italian grape ales? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, Italy had something very very specific. You know uh, that that they used to combine the real terroir, the the, the real. Uh, tradition of Italy inside with beer. And that, that was, that's the real, the real characteristic of Italian craft brewing. They combine local with the, with the, the beer is, is like, you know, um, a whiteboard of a painter, you mm. know, mm-hmm. and, and, and the Italians just get in with the, with the local stuff and they give it the color. It's been a while since I sang the praises of my Warthog electric system from our friends and sponsors, Desiree and Dave, from HighGravityBrew.com. Desiree and Dave have been pioneers of electric brewing since way back before it became mainstream. I remember in the beginning, you know, I was skeptical, honestly, about electric brewing. But the first time I fired up my Warthog system, it boiled those doubts away. My Warthog system took the pain out of propane and has really helped me dial in my brews a lot better. And along with that, HighGravityBrew.com is is a very well-stocked homebrew store as well, of course. We went there a couple weekends ago, and I'm, I'm always the way, I'm always amazed at the quality and selection that they have. Uh, you can take advantage of that using the very handy Build Your Own Beer page on HighGravityBrew.com. Or if you want to use a tried and tested recipe from Pippin's Tap Room, an award-winning recipe, pick up a recipe kit. Be sure to use the promo code EBC75BB to save 75 bucks off your Warthog Electric gear. That's EBC75BB. And tell them we say hi at family-owned and operated HighGravityBrew.com. That's HighGravityBrew.com. So it sounds like to me that, that the style, uh, that there really is no quote unquote style because if you're talking about you know you can have it either clean or you know funky and wild you can have it uh, you know with red grapes you can have it yeah. with with white grapes you can have it with uh I mean does the base beer style change as well can you have like a pilsner grape ale uh and then a and then a porter uh base beer with a, with another uh, style of grape as well Oh, uh, actually, um, the one was uh, I was talking to you about the Sapa. Uh, actually, it was uh, it was a dark beer, and uh, it, and the first uh, IGAs were more uh, Belgian inspired mm. uh, for the fermentation process or for the um, for the type of base use. So they were more like uh, Belgian ales uh, based, used, and then combined together with. Uh, with with grapes, sometimes already uh, uh, fermented or with uh, wild yeast use or Belgian style yeast use, sometimes not. Uh, and last year's uh, we got uh, more uh, different types. So now, uh, I think the darker darker ones are are more rare. Hmm. Uh, but you know the the clear clear ones, the whiter ones, they they are more suitable for the beers because a lot of people. And a lot of brewers like to to get even the color of the grapes inside, you know. Oh, yeah. So if you use red grapes, they they may uh, use a light a uh, light malt base just to get in uh, with the uh, with the color of the red grapes, or uh, maybe some someone likes to have it lighter, and they use a Moscato grape uh, that is a white kind of grape, very very sweet, and um, 
they use uh, like a lighter base to just get the kick in of the Moscato inside. And uh, yeah, uh, I think there's a, it's more a little bit on the lighter side, but uh, maybe we can say that the, the ma- majority of the, of the beer styles are all more uh, Belgian inspired rather than German or English. Well, that makes sense. I mean, the Belgians are known for adding, you know, sugars uh, and, yeah. and candy sugar to their their beers, and it seems to me that uh, that that kind of a of a base, you know, with with a malt base with sugar added, uh, is very similar, at least in theory, to uh, to what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that was. I think that was even because in that time the Italian brewers were more looking at Belgium to experiment with the uh with the wild yeast with the uh you know the more acid side of the beers and uh maybe that that thing combined together and it was more maybe because even it, it was more easy i i could say that without <laughs> you know <laughs> uh because yeah you know when i i used to homebrew and when i got a an acid beer that was a uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> <Something went laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, some people that you know, we we call them haters now, but we can say different words if we want. Uh, <laughs> in the first round of Italian craft beer, where you know, quality was not really on the right side, <laughs> and uh, some and, and some guys used to come out with you know, uh, uh, they have you know uh, a Belgian beer. And suddenly you find uh, the same Belgian beer, Sour Edition. Mm. <laughs> you no, know? and a lot of people say mm, Sour Edition. You know, you're, you're trying, just trying to sell your beer that just went wrong. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of people just you know thought that maybe a little bit of truth inside. So, you know, that's those are passages someone has to do. So, and uh, but you know now it's 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 a thing and it's it's very really appreciated and uh, I think doing it right, you know, it's it's quite difficult and. A lot of pros here in Italy do it well. Actually, uh, there are a lot of uh, mm, of styles right near the IGAs that use fruit inside or berries or both of things like that. And uh, so there are IGAs, and and the wide range is very wide. But you know, there's a lot of styles that just just run along on the sides that use grapes, yeah, but use even fruits or berries or things like that. And so. There's a lot of fun here, <laughs> and and I'm assuming that the that the the character that you want from the IGA, I'm assuming that that you're mostly leaning towards showing off the character of the grape rather than the malt. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I I think in, in my opinion, I think that um, balancing is the, is the key. You know, so most drinkable uh, IGAs are sure balanced that have you know th- that kick in with the grapes, but, you know, they have the, that still multi base. And so you can just get both of them inside when you, when you, when you sip, you get a sip. Uh, but yeah, there are, there are a lot of, um, a lot of beers that you can actually really uh, taste the grapes inside or taste the, some of the uh, characteristics of some grapes, because some grapes are very, very characteristic. The basic one that I know that I'm fond of is Moscato. That is this is this grape. It's a, a white grape, and, and it's called Moscato because it has uh, little dots on it, mm. little uh, brownish dots on it. And if, if you look at it from from far, you see this uh, the grapes, and it looks like it some mosquitoes on it. Oh. <laughs> that's, most guys fly in Italian, so and that, that that's why they call it Moscato. And um, it, 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 those little dots are the sugars, are made by the sugars. And that is really, really sweet. And it, it, it gets a nice wine. Uh, a lot of Prosecco is made from even from, from Moscato too. And mm-hmm. I think Prosecco is, getting, Prosecco, Prosecco is going to be a good thing now in America. I don't know. I, I was recently in America and uh, I heard a lot about Prosecco. Yeah, yeah. Did you? Uh, well, I'm not – I mean – I'm mostly a beer drinker, Tony, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I have had some uh, some good uh, prosecco. Uh, at least I think it's good, but my palate is you know not trained toward that direction. So the, yeah. so so the, it's on the sweet side, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
So the so these IGAs are they speaking of sweet or dry? Are they because of the uh, the grape juice content? Do they lean toward the dry, or do the brewers try to kind of preserve some of the malty mouthfeel of the beer side as well? Well, yeah, it's um, they 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 mostly lean uh, more uh, toward the dryness than uh, than than the sweetness. But we actually have a lot of uh, sweet versions. Mm, the first and the most uh, mostly you can find uh, versions that go more on 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 the acid side, you know, mm-hmm. more on the sour side, the tart side. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tart and things. Like, yeah, because they mostly they use uh, mixed fermentations or uh, wild ones. A uh, lot of people experimenting with the wild yeast on the on on the peels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that would it would be difficult to preserve, you know, a lot of sugars if you've got some wild. Uh, yeasts yeah. in there they tend they <laughs> yeah. tend to be a little more hungry than the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, than yeah. the domestic I think that, um, the the ones with the with the berries or fruit added inside are the more on the sweeter side but i think mostly of the igas are the uh, quietly balanced but maybe more on the sour side and when are the are is it just the concentrated must uh, that they use or do they use whole fruits as well well, uh, then they use a lot of things now. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of mm, kind of. Oh, they use the must, the fresh must. Uh, first, in first time, they used the um, the rejected products. You know, when they <laughs> made wine, they crushed the the grapes, and then uh, brewers used to used to run out and ask for the for the used and the crushed grapes, and and maybe sometimes they even have the stems on it. You know, mm. so you have even that herbal thing inside and they use that to infuse the beer uh then they use only the the crushed grapes and then they use the must sometimes they use the the must that's a little bit fermented uh sometimes they try to use it already fermented but it's not (laughs) almost wine because that's not legal and yeah there's a there's a lot of kinds um a lot of blending too uh a lot of uh, a lot of people used to uh, are trying to to blend things in so uh, they get like uh they age uh maybe a, a beer uh and then uh that beer that's not fermented with wild yeast goes with the must and then there starts a new fermentation with the wild yeast and yeah so there's a lot of experimenting in there and i'm assuming since they're if they're looking for preserving the wild yeast character that they're not adding uh, the grapes or the must to the hot side. They're not putting it in the boil kettle because that would, you know, sanitize uh, those good. Sometimes, bugs. yeah, yeah, they they really don't do that. Yeah, they, uh, some some do that. Some just sanitize the must, you know, and then and then after sanitizing the must, they they just uh, use a wild wild fermentation process. Yeah, but that that's they they, they use it always infused in the barrels. Mm. Sometimes in the barrels with the grapes, you know, they just combine a lot of things together. And uh, uh, I quite can say there's a lot of experimenting in this. And uh, now uh, there's there were some some things that you know <laughs> when you experiment, not everything goes right. You know, <laughs> but in the years uh, there's a lot of experience, and so I can now tell that you. Know, the uh, actually the the judges in the last competition of Vida del Lano were were quite amazed about the quality of the the IGAs in the year. Huh. Yeah, it seems like I guess if you if you're wanting to pick the um, the microbes, you know that that want to that give you a a wild character, but one that is that you're you know you want to target. If you were to sanitize the must or sanitize the grapes uh, by heat, uh, you know that would that would eliminate any of the you know, kind of more sort of funky uh, wild yeah. organisms that that might give you some characteristics that, or some performance as well that that you wouldn't want necessarily. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It can give you more than a a grape juicy <laughs> kind of you know spectrum of taste, and that's what maybe Sapa, the that Roman uh, ancient Roman recipe that I was talking about uh, earlier. It, it, maybe that could have more of that characteristic characteristic of you know uh, a grape juice matured 
and then fermented and you know you have those that mm, kind of maybe oxidated the mm. taste uh, but yeah yeah uh, many of them try not to boil the the must or the or or the grapes with the with the beer just to preserve uh, all the the essentials of the grapes so so when they concentrate the the must uh, you know concentrate the sugars uh, mm-hmm. is there any kind of of darkening or is there any kind of caramelization that happens yeah. with, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. heating process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Sapa does actually, you know. But many people try to reduce the the the, the must and then uh, some someone tried to reduce the must but not as a syrup, but just to reduce it a little bit to make get it a little bit more thicker, a little bit more and surely that that does darken. Yeah, and but uh that kind of process is made almost uh, with uh, with red or darker grapes rather than, than white ones. Ah, I see. Good news for lager fans from our friends and sponsors at Imperial Organic Yeast. L26 Pilgrimage is still the featured yeast from Imperial until the end of May. It's been so popular that they've extended it. Uh, Pilgrimage is a favorite of professional brewers, and now we home brewers can get it in those easy to open packages that contain 200 billion cells. You've seen the results of my putting Pilgrimage to the test on Basic Brewing Video. It did great with my passion fruit Pilsner and my toasted rye Doppelbach. Really had no problem with the three pounds of fruit puree in the Pilsner, and that uh, high gravity Bach was no match. For pilgrimage, even at lager temps with no starter. In fact, my stir plate is dusty because I don't use it anymore to make starters for moderate gravity five gallon batches. And for moderate gravity five gallon batches, if I pitch in the early afternoon, my airlocks are usually bubbling before bedtime. And Imperial has excellent technical support on top of that. Ask your local homebrew store about L26 Pilgrimage from Imperial Organic Yeast. And check them out at imperialyeast.com. That's imperialyeast.com. Now, now in my mind, you know, as a home brewer, Tony, I'm thinking, you know, how can I do this? And <laughs> and uh, over here, and I'm sure they, I don't know. Well, I don't know if they if they have it over there, but we have uh, home winemaking kits where in these boxes they have a bag of concentrated must. Now, this must is is uh, concentrated uh, using a vacuum evaporation process to preserve the character of the must, you know, so that it doesn't get the darkening, it doesn't get the, you know, the the Maillard reaction of, of heat. Uh, but then, you know, the home brewer takes this and dilutes it uh, and then adds yeast uh, and, you know, other... Uh, bentonite and other uh, clarifying agents and things like that and ferments, you know, a wine. And I'm thinking, you know, they sell these these uh, one gallon uh, wine kits, you know, where you get kind of a small bag of this concentrated must. And I'm thinking, you know, for a five gallon batch of beer, you know, what if I made a, say, a wort with, say, just like Pilsner malt to give a light colored uh, wort and then added this concentrated grape juice in there, and then maybe added some Belgian yeast, you know, to give a little uh, Belgian y character in there. Would do you think that that would be something that would be sort of true to the quote unquote style of the Italian grape ale? Okay, first to say, uh, you know, if you even only mention uh, wine kits, you can be arrested here in Italy, right? <laughs> You know that you have to be aware for that, right? Yeah, if any Italian uh, just listens about the uh, wine kits and concentrated <laughs> wine to do wine at home, they just you know they, they ro- just faint out. They know, roll right? their just, eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They roll their eyes, but that that could be the best part because the majority is going to call the cops and get you arrested immediately for that. You know? Get you in front of the judge and maybe execute you, things like that. <laughs> They're very, very, you know, proud of Italian of winemaking. And so uh, when I heard about those kits and um, those kind of things, yeah, yeah Italians used to 
maybe laugh, but they think it's serious and they say, oh, no, 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 that's, that's not going to happen, you know? <laughs> so let's assume we didn't talk about that, right? <laughs> let's just talk about uh, so other the than, best thing. So my, my premise is flawed from the beginning, but other than that. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you so much. You know, that's like uh, an Italian thing now. There's a lot of groups even in America on Facebook that, uh, you know, just make fun of these things like that. You just... You just try to experiment and just say, I don't know, uh, maybe a, a go on social media and make a post and say, okay, I'm just going to do a perfect Italian thing. I'm going to do fettuccine Alfredo and I'm going to shove it on a steak. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and everybody thinks that that's Italian. And Italian, and that, that you're going to have the same reaction. They're going to go to the cops or they're going to yell or they're going to you know, roll their eyes and things like that. So that said... What uh, what I would suggest is, in, in, I think, well, uh, just speaking now uh, a little more seriously, uh, there are, a, I don't know if there's a lot of Italians in, in your zone, but where I, I used to live in Canada, we were surrounded by Italians, but I think it maybe now in, you know, in California or in other, other places, but maybe almost everywhere, in uh, late August, uh, when the uh, first of September, you can find someone that actually does wine at home with with actual real grapes i think i don't know uh, <laughs> i'm just asking so if you have the opportunity to get your hands on someone that uh on that kind of grapes or someone that's doing wine at home and you can maybe just ask them for uh, a little uh you know a couple of liters of, of must or the just the crushed grapes and you have to be very fast because that that stuff uh starts fermenting by itself very very fast so mm. uh you know if you find someone that's making wine uh, or red wine or a white wine with actually with grapes and you go there and just ask them can i take a couple of liters of this stuff and actually brew uh have your brew day that same day that would be perfect i think in my opinion but if we want to talk about what you're what's available there <laughs> now, now we do we do have vineyards in arkansas uh, oh, and okay. in fact, Northwest, yeah, Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas used to be huge in the uh, apple and grape industry. Uh, but now, um, now more toward the central part of the state, uh, there are near um, Altus, Arkansas. There are some family-owned wineries down there. Um, mm-hmm. They also have – I don't know if you've heard of muscadine uh, grapes, uh, but it's kind of a mm-hmm. wild grape that might be a fun thing to play with to kind mm-hmm. of get some yeah. you know, local terroir here. That's uh, right, yeah. But go ahead and, and continue your disassemblage of yeah. my idea, Tony. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, the idea that you actually had was right, you know, just not assuming it, just not talking about the, the, the syrupy thing that you spoke about. <laughs> <laughs> just, let's, let's assume it's wine. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a fun thing to do. I, I would do, actually do that. Uh, maybe uh, I would not hop it so much because the, the IGAs are – almost not hopped at all mm. or just a little little bit you know like when you do that when you make a a weizen or a, a blanche that you, you you don't use so much hops so right uh, I, I won't use much hops and i would just have you know a, a almost a neutral uh malt base and and i would play i was out there playing i think that's more uh, uh interesting making more experiments maybe you can use some of the must and make all mix and ferment together, or you can try a wild fermentation, or uh, you can uh, try a first fermentation with the beer and add uh, the must at the secondary right? and, and have a, a different reaction from that. And also you have to choose a, a yeast of your choice. i sure that, you know, does the job better. So uh, here uh, they they're using a lot of Belgian stuff, mm-hmm. actually stuff that can handle the alcohol level. So uh, maybe I, w- I won't use like a, a USO five or things like that. Maybe some more Belgic things. And more uh, a lot of people use a yeast that goes even with the imperial stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe just yeast that are more stronger that can handle uh, the alcoholic stuff. Yeah, I, there's I, a lot of fun to use it. I, I, flo- I floated this idea toward Casey at uh, at Imperial Organic, Organic Yeast, and she suggested uh, the Imperial. Uh, uh, I think it's called Triple Double, uh, which is wow. you know a, a Belgian yeast, um, you know used for you know Belgian like triple 
uh, fermentations, mm-hmm. double fermentations. It seems like to me that would be, you know, would have enough strength and it would add some uh, some yeast character in there as well. Maybe yeah, yeah. maybe if I do it, you know, because fall is a long time away, Tony, and the, <laughs> the grapes aren't yeah. ready yet. So maybe if I, you know, maybe if I do it uh, with, you know, the the uh, the must from the box. Uh, from the yeah. bag, uh, maybe if I call it a, you know, like a, a. Uh, I'll just uh, lower the volume here, just so no one <laughs> can hear that. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe if I call it like a wine or, or a, a grape triple, and, st- and st- leave <laughs> yeah. the Italian, leave the leave the Italians out of it uh, altogether. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 fine. I think that yeah, you can use that that in, um, those boxes and, and and just try to play with that. I think. Very uh, that you have the mo- most fun if you can actually use the grapes. If you have mm, access on the grapes mm, somehow, if you have vineyards around and things like that, yeah, that would be very great. Yeah, that's 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 one for the fall. I'm... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. But but you know me. You may if you know me, Tony. I once I get an idea in my head, it's going to bug me until I do it. So it, what I may do <laughs> is do kind of a you know kind of a dry run sort of. Uh, you know, using my crazy idea with the with the box kit, and uh, you know, do and and see what happens with the fermentation. And yeah, such yeah, and such. yeah. You can use that because actually, a lot of Italians reduce actually the must. So what you find in those boxes, I think it is actually reduced must. Is that is that correct? Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. See, I'm I'm bringing yeah, you yeah. over to my side here, Tony. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> You got to use what you got. You that's, know? Right. Well, that's, that's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it sounds it sounds delicious. Um, my uh, uh, my son is is planning a trip uh, to to Rome at the end of uh, at the end of summer. Uh, oh, wow. So uh, you know maybe I can can convince him to uh, to sneak a few bottles in his luggage. You know, oh, on, sure. on the way back or something <laughs> like that. Or you know, next time uh, our friends come over from from Rome. Uh, maybe we can get you know a, a small smuggling operation uh, going on with the the Italian grape ales, uh, <laughs> or or hopefully uh, maybe this is a better a better thing to shoot for. Maybe uh, they get so popular and so in demand that we actually import them from the Italian brewers. Well, uh, I know they're trying to do that, and I don't know the law how it's working. You know, this, this, these are times where. Uh, customs and things like that are very difficult and uh, more less easy than uh, than ever to to move uh, products and alcohol. But you know, I think they are they are organizing a, an export of uh, IGAs somehow in uh, in the US. Mm, I I can let you know about that. <laughs> I just yeah. have to do a little bit of research of, of what's going on because uh, several Italian breweries are um, exporting to US. Actually, the Italian pills. There is um, a historical uh, craft brewer in Italy that's called Bificio Italiano, and that actually has invented this uh, style that is the Italian pills and has a beer that's called Tipo Pills. That means type of pills, <laughs> almost pills, things like that. <laughs> and and and, and uh, those kind of pills are, are are doing are doing a lot well. And they told me that in California and on the east side of the coast, they're they're doing quite well now. So I think there is a um, there was something going on with the, the exports. I don't know about the IGAs still if they're going outside or not. But you know, I think that's if if that's not happening, it's going to happen soon. Well, let let me know if you if you know of of uh, any breweries exporting IGAs uh, to oh, the sure. United States, and I'll let our listeners know to to keep an eye yeah. out for them. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, Tony, it was it was fun talking to you, and uh, I'm sorry it's been 14 years. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry too about that. <laughs> but maybe we can find another another fun thing to talk about and and get together again. Yeah, I want to. I, I I confess, I want to. Start like the, the the Eagles on the <laughs> on the acoustic album when they said uh, we just didn't broke up. It was just a fourteen year vacation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was too big for me. I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> that just gives me a peaceful, easy feeling. So yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it too. Uh, to have a, a nice chat with you. It was, a, it was about time, right? Yes, exactly. 
<laughs> thank, thank you, Tony. <laughs> okay, ciao to everyone, and uh, come to Italy or uh, just look out Italy and uh, don't eat fettuccine Alfredo. Okay, <laughs> that's not an Italian thing. <laughs> Sorry, I have to do that. <laughs> well, thanks again to Tony. Fettuccine Alfredo is not a thing in Italy. It's apparently sort of the chop suey of pasta, an American invention. At least it's something we've uh, Americanized beyond it, a recognition in the eyes of Italians. And uh, after listening back to my conversation with Tony, I- I'm going to put my wine kit IGA on hold and wait until I can get my hands on some Arkansas grapes uh, or must or, or maybe even muscadine to uh, make a more authentic product. If you decide to uh, do the uh, wine kit approach, let me know. I'd be curious to see how that comes out. And by the way, I have to defend wine kits. Uh, I've, I've made some really tasty wine with even the basic kits. And Steve has made some super delicious wines with the upper tier kits. So uh, we'll have to do a tasting with Tony one day to try to change his mind. If you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say howdy, write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com and please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Check out our mobile-friendly shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody supporting us through our Patreon page. Special goodies coming your way. Check that out at patreon.com slash basicbrewing. Remember, I'm off next week. Don't panic. We'll be back uh, in June. Uh, The first week of June, in fact. Until then... Uh, That's all. Until next time, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer, production help for Basic Brewing Radio, and our website is provided by Kelly Donson. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time. In the the meantime, stay well, unlike me, and stay tuned. So long. So long.